I've got a great story for you today from a high school athlete that I work with. We're just going to jump right in because she does such a good job of telling the story. I started gymnastics when I was really young, probably when I was like six or seven. And then I just kept continuing with it until I got to about level seven. She was really good at it, um, but she started having hip problems, back problems. So we took up track. She hurdled a little bit, ran some sprints, you know, kind of what all the kids do. Yeah, when you're in middle school, they kind of show you all the events, what different things you can do. And hurdles really stuck out to me and I just kind of kept doing them. And I wasn't really good in middle school, but I just thought they were fun at the time. Um, but she did okay. I mean, she was, she was winning those races, seemed to like hurdling. So she got a little bit more involved her freshman year. I was, I wasn't like great at it, but I was, decent. She wasn't winning races, but she was up there. She was doing pretty well. We hooked up with Mike with Ace Method. I did a virtual coaching session with Chad and Amber, and as soon as I saw her video, I knew exactly what I was working with. Really funny because the first words out of Mike's first evaluation was, well, I can see that she's a gymnast or a dancer. I've coached a few gymnasts, cheerleaders, and dancers over the years, and they all have a particular way that they lift their lead leg in order to get lift. So you knew right away Mike knew what he was talking about. It's good for their sports, but it's not good for hurdling. It's a really tough habit to break, and to be honest with you, they don't always work it out. The thing about Amber, she's very dedicated. She's not afraid to work extremely hard, probably more than most. Even though Amber was already hurdling and not a complete beginner, I put her on my hurdling 101 because I needed her to start back from the beginning in order to try to break those habits. And we did a ton of training. I made some PVC hurdles, we put them in the yard, and we were doing walking drills, you know, how to move your arms, how to move your legs, and walk, 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 and we just progressed and progressed. We would send Mike the videos, and Mike would send them back with, you know, oh, you gotta change this, you gotta do this. He would send videos back telling me what I can improve on and what videos I can watch in order to, like, find different drills I can do. And we just kept repeating, 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 repeating over and over as with Mike's expertise, I mean, I, for two years we've been doing this. We work pretty well together and Amber got really, really good. I was able to break the school record, which was super exciting because I always thought of it as a goal, but I didn't really like realize I could actually do it until I saw my time and realized how big of a break I actually made it. She qualified for state her sophomore year. She didn't make finals, but she placed 14th at state for division one, which is the highest, largest school division in, in Wisconsin. So she did very well. Amber seeing this just repeated the process, working with Mike. In between my sophomore and junior year, I would still come to the track in the summertime, but I was actually starting to take it more seriously. Hurdle coaching is a lot like sculpting. And at first you're removing big chunks of things that you want to get rid of. But once that sculpture starts to take shape, you're now starting to do a little more fine tuning. And that's where we were with Amber at this point. So we went into junior year and she let open with a 1540, which I knew was really good. And Amber was constantly in the top five in the state with her times, getting faster, getting faster. It came more and more easy to get in that low 15s. I was extremely confident going into regionals. The weather was actually really good. I was like, this is gonna be my meet. Warming up, I felt great. Prelims was good. Again, I just kind of took the ending slow so I'd be ready for finals. And then it came to finals, I felt extremely good. I was like halfway, I didn't see anyone by me, which was huge because there should have been girls like right next to me. So I was like, well, where is everyone? I didn't know if they were running a bad time. If I was just running a really good time, I wasn't really aware. And then the whole race felt amazing. And then it came to the last hurdle and I unfortunately hit it with my lead leg which made the hurdle fall forward and my um, trail leg hit it. So there was no way around it. And I crashed to the floor, even though I was like super close to the finish line. Then I got up and I finished and I kind of walked off and I didn't really realize it until I started walking. And I was like, my season's over, which was extremely disappointing. 
and it was definitely hard to hold back tears. I started walking away and I was like, this is kind of it. And I started crying. The regional race was really hard. <laughs> Amber took it probably better than a lot of us. I get emotional because she works so hard. She's at that track all the time. So for her to get cut short, like that was hard. Um, but she was unbelievable in getting through that. Probably better than, <laughs> better than us. I really had to like get my emotions back together because I still had a team that needed me. I couldn't be all like sad about it. We still had two more races that we could win. And so I just kind of had to hold my emotions in and try to get everyone up ready to run. And she put on two school records after that, which is unbelievable to do that after that fall. That was extremely impressive. Well, Amber didn't get to go to state in the hurdles. She did go in two relay races, so she was able to watch the finals of the hurdles and she could have competed really well. It was really hard to see it because I have beat her two out of the three times we've raced, so I could have been right there with her. But unfortunately, I just had to watch it and not be in it. Hard to swallow. Amber does great with it, but now she's going to be pretty driven. I have a whole summer to train now and get ready for my senior year. And so I have had, I've decided that I'm also going to do AAU, which will hopefully give me three more meets to compete with some of the top girls and hopefully be able to prove to myself that I can stay right with them, even though I wasn't able to run and stay with them and see how low I can get my time. And before that, I will be training just like I was before. I'll come to the track. <laughs> I told Amber on the way here that we should really try to take a month break. She started her season before everyone did. She's ending her season a month after everyone did. Her body's got to recover, and she said, she said, there's no way I'm taking a month break. Uh, that's just Amber. So... We'll, we'll probably fight over that a little bit. <laughs> I'll come to our high school track and practice just like I did last summer with Mike and my dad. We'll send him videos, get feedback, and come back better for next year. So I'm not done sculpting Amber yet. There's still some things that I know she can change to get even better for senior year. So if you want to follow along, make sure to subscribe to this channel so when you can see when I post updates on her. If you want to see how I can help you with your hurdling, there's links in the description below, or you can go to my website at asmethodcoaching.com.